So I just wanted to, I'll get started. I just wanted to say thank you to the Wireless LAN team, all of you guys for welcoming me here today. I'm not an engineer, I'm a salesperson. So, you know, it's been great to be with you and be part of this conference. Uh, I want to thank Drew Lentz and Howard from uh, the Infra, oh, Infra, what is it, Telecom Infra project. Uh, they were super helpful in the process. If you saw the Airvines running this week, we were powering their backbone so, in their network, and that uh, was really exciting. Yeah, that's right up here. Thank you. And uh, thank you to Jim Palmer. I just, I'm pretty much coming up to the end here, so just thank you to the staff and everybody in this room, and appreciate it. You guys have tons of knowledge on wireless, and uh, it's amazing. All right, so uh, what is Airvine? So Airvine is an uh, indoor wireless backhaul product, one of the world's first. Um, we are focused entirely on indoor. That's why I highlight this. Our cousins in the outdoor sometimes get confused with us. I've heard a few people mention that this week. Uh, but we're uh, out of this box here that you're seeing. It'll be uh, a little smaller than what everybody has seen today. Our GA box comes out next month. But it'll be three gigs in and out of the uh, radio ports on the ends of the device. Um, we're doing high gain antenna, so three, 30 dBA, so we can control the beam as it goes through walls or around corners. So now you can carve a network, and we'll talk about some case studies in a few minutes, and you can see how we've uh, been designing these networks. So uh, we can steer the beam for easy installs. We'll talk about this. There's uh, two broadband wireless antennas, as I mentioned. They're not meshed. They don't need to be meshed. You can actually uncouple your APs from mesh with this product if you need to. Uh, four gig E port, ports out with PoE out. Future will have it PoE in. Uh, layer two switch basically in the ceiling now. So we're taking the switch out of these closets near elevators and putting them above everybody's head. And we'll talk about some of the benefits we see with that. Um, it's configured by an app, which we'll talk about. It's about a hundred meter distance before you need another one. We can get longer ranges, but rated for indoors. So that's about what it would be. And super low latency through the box. All right, we'll dig in. You kind of saw these up at the, uh, at the show. If you saw the lobby or last night at the event with Drew, we had these running, uh, moving data uh, into the APs. But this is basically our secret sauce or behind the scenes. Uh, down here in this bottom row, we, uh, this is where our patents lie. Uh, so we're able to you know, handle the antennas, uh, you know, use the gain, beam steer. Uh, these are all different things that are you know, we've done, and we'll talk about a little bit more deeper what that looks like. Uh, it's a pencil thin beam, as you can see with the, between the panels uh, that has in the 60 gigahertz range. And so uh, we're just carrying backhaul. You can plug things in to the back of these and broadcast out into different modems, which we'll talk, mediums, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Any questions? Oh, thanks. All right, problems we're trying to solve. Uh, we're really trying to just increase the, you know, <laughs> the bandwidth in, in any in environment, really, uh, without a lot of friction. So, you know, bring multi-gigabit bandwidth indoors without having to, you know, do construction, high costs of construction up front, slow down projects, as you guys know, delays. Uh, move static and permanent wireless networks to an adaptive and flexible network. Segment for security and budget. We see a lot of folks that we've been talking to just don't have the budget to put up a secondary network for security, to air gap out an IoT network, for instance. So this is working well for that. Definitely removes and reduces construction delays. Uh, we've seen that across a number of different places. Um, we're going to see a lot of rip and replace bandwidth upgrades with, uh, I've heard a lot of 6 and 7 talk, 5G, bringing that in. Uh, more gigabit speed access. Metaverse with Drew. He got his picture there of him doing the you know, Oculus downstairs. These are all stuff hotels we're talking to are looking to do. So uh, how do you get that in quick? We have some answers for that. And great for events. They can easily go up and down, as you guys have seen this week. There's a lot more, too. So please, if you have other ideas, throw them at us. No one's ever seen this before, so we're just putting it together. So this is how our antenna works. Uh, if uh, the non airvines on the top, you can see there's a lot of side lobes coming out of that beam. Our, our technology, as I mentioned before, we are suppressing those side lobes, and we're opening up a bigger bandwidth envelope for uh, data to pass by. And those are our chips there on the side. So we'll continue to build this out. It was uh, created by four PhDs and our staff. Uh, the, the technology came out of the University of Michigan. Our, one of our co-founders is the dean there. 
I'm just going to fly through these. You guys will get this presentation, but these are just some of the specs. I know it's important to this community. Take a picture. I won't go through these in too much detail, but it's got power and heat and all the ratings and those types of things. We have a data sheet that I have in my bag or you can download off our website. So feel free to take a look. All right, fast and effortless deployment. This is one of the value positions. Uh, these things just screw into the ceiling. They find each other. You do not have to be a person in this room with the experience you have to put these up. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So you could direct other people to put these up that have different skill sets, maybe more construction skill sets in a facility. They'll find the beam. It'll beam you. You'll be able to see it from a dashboard like you know, Net Experience had last night. Uh, back home in your knock or in another facility. But these networks go up. This is a self-healing network. Uh, so it's got a dual counter ring, just like fiber would. And if there's a cut, I'd cut the animation off of this because it's too long. But if there's a cut, you would see one go down and the data would go around the other sides. They screw into the ceiling, like I said. I'll talk about the app in a minute. But once they're up and running, you know, you saw it yesterday, I think Drew and I and Howard took it down and put it up in the same hour from the lobby to the top of the, and most of that was traveling up the elevator to the top of the floor. This is how uh, it installs. We have an app to do that. Uh, I'll show some screenshots here in a minute, but you basically just dial it in and it finds itself. I was doing it last night and they usually find themselves even without the app. You just have to look at the little light under the box. Little setup wizards just to show the depth. Uh, you know, I won't go through these, but we've put a lot of time and energy in. The Ruckus product team pretty much built this. They've come over to Airvine and been working us, with us for many years. So, uh, a lot of there, if you see and know Ruckus, then there's a lot of uh, that going on in this product. There's just more screenshots about how the app is managed. You can see some dials and metrics. This is our web GUI, which you might have saw last night during the um, event when we had it live running, some more just shots. And then anyone that likes command line, I always put this in. So I don't make everybody crazy, usually about 10 or 20% that like man command line. So it's important that we have that. Here's just a diagram so you can kind of see, this is a little bit of what we had uh, up last night. Uh, it's sitting on two tripods. Uh, you could have a switch coming off these boxes. There's four ports on the top. And so uh, you could extend them out for IT or OT networks off that switch. You can add cameras directly in. You'll get great quality because this is a total clear access channel uh, in this beam. Uh, we're access independent, uh, Wi-Fi, 5G, CCTV cameras. Uh, we've done everything but really deliver television. You know, we can move video, but delivering television isn't in that range. But pretty much any other access we can handle. All right. How do we know it works? Uh, Matt had a great question earlier. What's our biggest deployment? These are our biggest deployments at this point. Is we've done 30 pilots globally. You can see all the pictures from the different pilots. Some of the folks in this room and at this conference are involved in that. Uh, you can see some really good feedback. And uh, we got our $10 million A round as a result of this pilot program uh, just yesterday. <coughs> Effortless moves and changes. So we're getting into some of the case studies here. Uh, you can see here, this is a case study for the University of Berkeley. We did this project for them. Uh, this is an expensive cost. They're in you know, the Bay Area and probably one of the highest you know, markets for labor in the world. Uh, so don't get too scared at that cost. It's our cost that we have to live with in that area. But um, you, know, you start to look at this and uh, they're able to move the airlines around without a four to five month or five to six week you know, delay in, in changing classrooms only because of Wi-Fi. They can do everything else in the short time frame. This is a design we just built, uh, just designed for an apartment building or an MDU in Brooklyn. And you can see here, uh, sorry, I'll get closer, but the, these boxes here are the air vines with the APs spidering off of them. They're getting services from these IDFs. Um, this was not able to be cabled, this building, because there was tenants in it already. It's uh, an affordable housing project in Brooklyn, brand new. So they had to move the tenants in as part of the, you know, the reason for the money. So uh, they're looking at airlines for that. Uh, I'll skip through this. We're very good for six, uh, six, six E upgrades. Uh, you can kind of see across the top here. Um, we have the speeds for that. You can see a 30,000 square foot building. 
10 locations. You can see two to three APs. We're going to have the wave tunnels going in all in a short time, and these can run multiple networks. Really good for manufacturing and smart warehouse. Ben Davis, who is the vice president and CIO of Cambria, they have a million square foot data center. He's going to start putting this technology in because he can now move it around in the ceilings and bring in different services, bring in different tool sets and different applications that he can't today. Uh, great for events. We saw that last night with Drew. Uh, great feedback from the field. We've been just getting really good. We have about 15 to 20 partners signed up globally, some folks in this room. And then um, please see me if you guys want to join our Slack channel. I just finished on time, thank God. Uh, we're just getting this started, so I'm just kind of working with it. Uh, if it doesn't work quite for you, just send me an email and we'll get it up and running. But uh, thank you so much. This is some of our leadership and engineers that will be in the Slack channel. And we'll hopefully build it out into different themes. And uh, just like uh, you guys have, and uh, start asking questions for this. So thank you so much.